Hello, and welcome to Mr. C and Mr. Santella's presentation on step one of the scientific method, which is... Asking a scientific question. Yes, asking a scientific question is incredibly important, and you may be asking yourself right now, why? Why, Mr. C? Why, Mr. Santella? Why is it important? There are a few very good reasons. It's the first step in the process. If you don't ask a good question, you're setting yourself up for scientific failure, which no good scientist wants. So make sure when starting the scientific method, you begin with a good question. Secondly, questioning is all that science is. All science is based on questions. Good questions, though. Not just, hey, mom, can I have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Not a good scientific question. A question indeed, but not a good scientific question. And we are going to get right into that because you may already be asking scientific questions on a daily basis. You just don't know it yet. So we're going to talk about the difference between a good question and a bad question. Take it away, Mr. Santella. A good scientific question is one that can be tested using the scientific method. For example, um, what would happen if I fed my plant soda instead of water? Oh, that is a great example of a good scientific question. Uh, and, and the reason for that is because we can test it, right? You can get a plant, you can get soda, and you can feed your plant soda. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. An example of a bad scientific question would be, how many pounds of pressure can a human head withstand before exploding? Well, yeah, I mean, you could test that, but you'd have to explode a human head. That's not something that you're going to do in an experiment, at least not in our country, okay? So we're gonna play some good cop, bad cop here and give you some other examples of good scientific questions versus bad scientific questions. Another good scientific question, hmm, what would happen if I mixed vinegar and baking soda? Ah, I like that because you have probably vinegar and baking soda in your cabinets at your house. Or if you don't, you could buy them at the store very easily. Okay, a bad question. Who has the stinkiest feet on the planet? Ooh. Why is that a bad question? Um, we can't get everybody's stinky feet in one place at one time and smell them. Yes, impossible to test. Not happening. So bad question. All right, give us one more good question. Oh, ooh, what would happen if I put a praying mantis and a spider together? Ooh, that, I actually am now very curious about that and we'll be praying mantis hunting as soon as we're done with yes. this video. Okay, bad question. How many gumballs can you fit in an elephant's mouth? I mean, you might be able to actually test that, right? But it's going to be really, really hard to get an elephant and to get him to hold gumballs in his mouth. Okay, so bad question. All right, so we are going to come up with one more scientific question that we're actually going to use in the videos that we shoot after this. Okay, so uh, uh, Mr. Santella, let's, let's brainstorm. Give me something that we could actually test in a classroom with students of any age. Ooh. What if we take a carnation, which is a flower, put it in water that has red food coloring in it? Ooh, that's a great question. I have a question for you. What color would the carnation be? Uh, to start. White to start. I like that. Yes. Okay, so, and we're going to quickly go over one more time why that's a good question. You can get a carnation. You can get food coloring. Everybody knows where to find water. This is an experiment that we can actually test. High five. High five. All right, so we're gonna quickly go into what we learned today. We learned a couple of things, young scientists. First of all, creating a good scientific question will mold all the steps that come after this, right? This is step one in the process. There's step two, three, four, five, six, and seven that are all gonna be shaped by this question that we ask ourselves in step one. And secondly, a good question is one you can actually test, one you can experiment with. Scientists love experiments, so you have to be able to ask a question that you can actually experiment with, okay? And we want you to do that right now, as we always do. You are gonna try this, okay? I challenge you to come up with your own scientific question, one that you actually could design an experiment for, 
right? Something you may actually be asking yourself, all right? And then write it down in your scientific notebook. Show your mom, show your grandma, show your auntie, your uncle, your older brother, somebody who is a, who is a more skilled scientist than yourself. Ask them if it's a good question and then save that question because we're going to use it again. Mm. Okay, so we hope that this helped. Tune in for part two of this series coming up shortly. Um, Mr. Santella, do you have any parting words of wisdom? Scientists are awesome. <laughs> sage, sage words there. All right, we will see you next time.